on to our next story, which is Roger Waters and Abby Martin on Gaza genocide. So I think some of you, if you were with me back then, you remember this coverage of Roger Waters. He was being smeared uh, by mainstream media uh, before a performance that he had which he's done before in other shows. Uh, people said that the performance that he did for one of his concerts was anti-Semitic, uh, but this was also in reference to the war in, in Ukraine. Uh, Roger Waters spoke out heavily against that. I think he also spoke to the UN uh, about that as well. So Roger Waters was a target. Uh, and he's also spoken up in reference to the Palestinian people and their struggle uh, and their rights as well. So they've been coming after Roger for a bit. For a minute. In this discussion here uh, with him and Abby Martin, he talks about that. He discusses like the attacks that he's faced, the smears that he's faced. And I just want to remind everybody again, Roger Waters is a musician. OK, like people, the way that they came after Roger Waters during that time, you would have thought that Roger Waters was like some high ranking political official, which obviously he's not. He doesn't have a political position at all. But you would have assumed that the way that the press came after him in their efforts to smear him. Let's go ahead and get into that discussion here. Talk about that and also just kind of the irony of being called an anti-Semitic Nazi, essentially, given who your father was and how he paid the ultimate sacrifice. Yeah. Well, as you say, it's been going on for a long time now. And so there's, there's really no mystery in it. Uh, the state of Israel, is under duress from many many quarters i'm i'm just one tiny bit of the bds movement and uh and i have been fairly outspoken and uh, they picked up on me probably 15 or 16 years ago yeah so the israeli lobby has got a loud and spiteful voice and as the israeli lobby although it has opinions doesn't have a leg to stand on in any conversation about the state of Israel, how it was created, the massacres that happened in 1948, all the massacres that have had happened since, all the ethnic cleansing, the destruction of Palestinian villages. And then more recently, after the Second Intifada, um, the bombings of Gaza after they left after the military left but they created this concentration camp in gaza and so there were the bombings in 2008 9 then 2014 then 2018 2019 2021 and now this this one which is absolutely unashamed no argument no question genocidal attack uh intended all their politicians have come out and and sort of admitted that they are attempting genocide and that they won't be happy until they've achieved it. In fact, Netanyahu, I'm going to try to cover this on Thursday, if I, I remember, um, because I forgot about it last time. Uh, Netanyahu publicly has made these comments that he just he does not care. He doesn't care about the, the, the dead children. He doesn't care about the Palestinian babies. He doesn't care about the fact that the doctors in the hospital trying to basically perform operations under like a flashlight because they don't have the electricity. Like he doesn't care. He doesn't care about the babies that have been pulled off the incubators because there's just no electricity at Sharifa Hospital. So they have made these statements publicly and the US government and mainstream media continues to pretend like they have not said these things. This is not a, just an opinion or a belief that we have that there's a genocide going on. It's the blatant statements in the data that has been presented in front of us that tell us this is what is happening. And what, what of course you and I and anybody sane is doing is making a huge fuss, but particularly because our governments have given them carte blanche to kill every last Palestinian yep. between the river and the sea, which after all is Palestine, always was in our hearts. It always will be. There, there I go again, you see. I'm demanding the death of every Jew on earth by that, which of course I'm not. I've got nothing against Jews at all. I never have had, and I never will have. That is not the way I judge people. If I judge people, I judge people by their actions, not by their religion. 
or their ethnicity. As I say it again and again and again, I have explained ad nauseam, because I've had a long time to work this out, that my platform and the platform from which I speak is the platform built upon the Declaration of Universal Human Rights in Paris in 1948 that you and I know. Okay, there are 30 articles. Many people don't know it. But basically, that's what it says. It says we're all human beings. This was decided after the Second World War when the human race sort of got together in a, in a fledgling uh, United Nations of we the peoples of this earth and said, we don't want all this war bullshit. So we're going to form this organization to avert the possibility of us ever having to go to war again. But this doesn't go along with the money makers of the world. And I'm not talking about Jewish people. I'm talking about people who like to make a lot of money and couldn't give a shit about anyone else. And then they are a minority, thank goodness. So he's talking about the Zionist. That's what he's talking about. And no, they're not they're not the same thing. So do we believe in human rights equally distributed amongst our brothers and sisters in the human race, or don't we? I do believe in that concept. The Israeli government, among many other governments maybe even, but people definitely does not believe in it. They, and they admit it openly, at least they're honest about it. They say, we do not believe in civil or, or, or human or rights under, under the terms of the law for any of the indigenous people of Palestine. Let me just pause right there for a second. When they talk about believing in human rights, a lot of these governments only believe in human rights for certain people. There's also a genocide happening in the Democrat Re Democratic Republic of the Congo. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later on this week. The Congo was also experiencing genocide. But a lot of these governments, when they talk about this human rights and they say we believe in human rights, some of these governments are only talking about human rights for certain people. So when it comes to the state of Israel, they don't believe that the Palestinian people should have those human rights. They don't believe in this at all. This is what people have to fully get. When you and I have this conversation and when we talk about like how the Palestinian people should have these rights, the government, the, the state of Israel, the government does not believe they should have them. Same thing happening in the Congo. They don't believe those people should have them. And when you hear these statements from our US government, I'm here to let you know these politicians in the United States also don't believe that the Palestinian people should have them. If they believe that, this idea of a two-state solution, which was proposed many years ago, those things would have already happened. Netanyahu doesn't want it. And uh, Naftali, Naftali Bennett, before him, also didn't want it. They didn't want it. They don't want them to have any rights. That's what people fully have to grasp. We just don't believe it. We think we are special and they are animals. And so obviously they don't deserve right. That would be like giving rights to cockroaches. We don't believe in so that's why I stand up and make as much noise as I can every single day of my life. So do you. So do many, many, many of mm -hmm. my friends. I want to. Now we're going to make this connection to the United States and with a different group of people. We're going to talk about what happened to African-Americans in this country. Especially for those of us that are from the South, those who were alive during the Jim Crow laws. How were Jim Crow laws allowed to be implemented in the first place? Because the governments did not believe that African-Americans should have those same rights. Think about it. This is why it kills me when people say, don't talk about this issue. Black people shouldn't talk about this. No, fuck that. Let's be real here. They didn't believe in this country. They did not believe that African-Americans should be able to sit at the front of the bus. 
They didn't believe that we should have well-resourced schools. They didn't believe the kids should have the school buses. So you can talk to people like my grandparents who lived through Jim Crow law and they'll tell you the stories about how they had to walk miles to school because again, the government in this country didn't want them to have a bus, but the white kids at the white school had a bus. They didn't believe they were supposed to have those same rights. They didn't believe that you were supposed to have the same access to resources as our white peers in this country. They didn't believe we deserved it. And I don't know how many times I got to say this to get this issue through people's thick skull. The people who are saying, don't talk about this. This has nothing to do with black people. If you can't make the connection between what is happening to the Palestinian people, what's happening to people in the Congo, and what has happened to black people in this country, you missed the boat, bud. You missed the boat. Put the two together. We can talk about different groups that's happened to in this country. The indigenous people. We killed your people. We stole your land. Here's a reservation and a casino. Be happy. The Japanese American internment camps in this country. Let's put you on a camp and force you to work. Be happy with what we gave you. And honestly, in this country, our government needs to be happy that, that Native Americans, the indigenous people in this country, they need to be happy that they haven't risen up. And I believe the only reason they haven't is because you killed most of them. Let's continue. Actually, ask you, what was the moment that you woke up to just this egregious situation going on? Because for me, it was, I mean, I was radicalized by the Iraq war, but the 2010 Gaza flotilla massacre was yeah. really the moment that catalyzed my my radicalism, like my radicalization into how Israel was, um, you know, the working Mavimara. in concert with the media. The Mavi Mara, the Turkish ship, the Turkish. Yeah. 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 yeah, I was radicalized a little bit before that. My, my turning point was when I was doing a tour of Europe in 2005, 2000, 2005. And suddenly there was a gap between Beirut and somewhere or other else. So my agent stuck a gig in in Tel Aviv and they went, oh, oh look, you've got just got time. You can go and do the Haikon Stadium in Tel Aviv. And knowing nothing, really, of which I'm deeply ashamed, I went, OK. So suddenly there was this gig in there and I started to get emails from uh, from supporters of the Palestinian people saying, Oi, what do you think you're doing? And luckily, this was exactly the time that um, Omar Burguti, who's become quite a close friend of mine, among others in Palestinian civil society, had just started the BDS movement. They'd looked at the uh, South African model of how the people of South Africa threw off the shackles imposed upon them by the Dutch, by the yep. Boers, for however many hundreds of years it was there. And so they decided that boycott, divestment and sanction was a great nonviolent way of fighting back against the fact that their land was being stolen and they were oppressed and that they were occupied, had been since 1967 and so on and so forth. That part right there about BDS, I think it's important. I'm so glad that he mentioned that because I don't think a lot of people are aware for people who criticize, like people like Richie Torres, who criticize the BDS movement, you need to know that that movement actually came from what the people did in South Africa that were f fighting back against apartheid. That's where they got the idea from. So they watched what people did in South Africa and were like, oh, okay, this is how they were able to fight back. And they were able to use that to create the BDS movement. So when politicians like Richie Torres and Hakeem Jeffries, when they criticize BDS, I don't even think they really fully understand what they're criticizing. 
because you can't sit up there in one full breath. And a lot of these politicians are doing it. You sit up there in one full breath and you applaud Nelson Mandela for his fight against apartheid in South Africa. And you acknowledge the apartheid that happened in South Africa. But in that same breath, you are not willing to acknowledge the apartheid that is happening, taking place in Israel. And you're not willing to applaud the BDS movement. Bought and paid for, a lot of them. So it's a, it's a rather long story. Cut it short. I canceled my gig. In, wow. In they explained to me that the stadium in, in Tel Aviv, Haikon Stadium, is built on Palestinian cemetery. Oh, it's my God. It's a desecration of, of the li culture, life, world of the people who were living in the land when the Israelis decided uh, after the Second World War in 1948 to steal it and just take it. So they did, and prevailed upon the United Nations that we were talking um, about before, with a lot of support from the UK government and the United States government even then, to push through um, recommendations that the Jewish people should be given a homeland in Palestine. They didn't ask the Palestinian people, of course. They made a, decided that. Anyway, to... They didn't ask people in Uganda either, because one of the countries they were also looking at was Uganda. They didn't ask any of those people. They didn't, like he said, they didn't ask the Palestinian people if that was okay. And one of the things that I brought up before, it kind of seems like to me, because these atrocities took place in reference to the Jewish people, these atrocities that occurred started in Germany, one would think that Germany would be the country to offer them a safe space. One would think that. But see, the British government didn't want to displace white people. They didn't want to displace Europeans. But it was okay to displace Palestinians. Finish my story. I actually, instead, I did do a gig in Israel. I did it at a peace village that was called in Hebrew, it's Neve Shalom, and in Arabic, it's Al Wahasat, I believe. And it was hugely successful, and 60,000 young Israelis came. Of course, what I didn't realize at the time, that it would only be young Israeli Jews coming to it, because mm -hmm. no Palestinian is allowed to move. So I couldn't play to a mixed audience. There's no such thing. Um, and and the, the gig, it was the Dark Side of the Moon tour, and it went swimmingly, as you would imagine. And they were, it's like, whoa, Roger, yeah, yeah, yeah. Until we got to the end, and I grabbed the mic and I went, Oh, thank you very much. What a lovely evening. And uh, now is the time this generation, this new young generation of Israelis, must start talking to your neighbors and make peace with your neighbors and figure out how to stop this, the occupation and the blah, blah, blah. And they went from, ah, to, What the fuck? <laughs> in a heartbeat. <laughs> You know, and in that moment, I thought, oh, my God, I don't even begin to understand that. So I went Talk about my... cognitive dissonance. Absolutely. And the next year I went back and I traveled all over Palestine the next year and saw it with my own eyes. And until you've been there and seen it with you, it's hard to comprehend. Even mm -hmm. then, that was in 2006. Mm -hmm. even then, it's hard to c comprehend how disgusting it is. Uh, Abby Martin has a really good documentary about Gaza. Um, someone told me this. I, I don't know if this is true, but someone told me that Abby Martin is not allowed to go back to Israel. Um, I don't I don't know for sure, uh, but I do know there are some people uh, that are not, you know, permitted to to enter. Um, and I, I will say. I think you really need to watch that documentary uh, by Abby Martin. I think you can see it now on, uh, oh, it's the name of that, uh, Means TV. I think you can find it on Means TV now. Um, so she, okay. Gamer said Abby is banned from Israel. That is real. Okay. So there you go. But uh, she has a really good documentary about Gaza. How hideous, what a hideous atmosphere everywhere there is. 
and how, as you say, cognitive dissonance is not just inbred into uh, the Israeli population, it's also propaganded into them. They almost inject their children through the eyeball to get them to believe, because it's repeated again and again, Palestinians are animals, Palestinians, they're not human. Don't even think about them ever. It kind of reminds you of children that have like racism, you know, and doctrine in them here in the United States. If you're a child and you're told since the time that, you know, you were able to, to talk uh, that, you know, black people are evil or indigenous people are evil or bad people or whatever. And that's ingrained in you from the time that you are young. You're brainwashed and it's like in order for you to to see a different perspective of that, number one, you have to be willing to want to see and hear a different perspective. Not everyone is. There are some that have done this before and they've changed like their entire path and journey. And some of them have become actually fighters uh, towards the people that that are still like them, how they used to be. Some people have fought back against like racism after they've left like those types of organizations. But when something is ingrained in you from the time when you are a child, I say the same thing about religion as well. Sometimes it can be really difficult to break people away from that. And they are so directed at maintaining the idea that is Israeli Jews are supreme beings chosen by God and nothing must get in the way. Of course, they don't. Of course, all Israeli Jews don't believe that, obviously, no. because you can't indoctrinate absolutely everybody. I suggest that might be true of any society. Another name that was on my, during my tour, it's interesting that they should have picked out, you can't have Anne Frank and Shireen Abu Atle in the same context, in the same thing, because Anne Frank is holier than holy, and Shireen is an animal. She's mm -hmm. a Palestinian. Mm -hmm. can't con Another name that comes up in that thing is Sophie Skoll. Okay, well, she, she wasn't Jewish. She was German, but she was executed by the Nazis in Munich in September 1943 for distributing leaflets in the university saying, we have to stop Hitler persecuting our Jewish brothers and sisters. So this is a big circle and we're all part of it because we're all human beings. We're all brothers and sisters. We're all cousins. And yet, and, but unfortunately, some of us come under the sway of malign influences like the Israeli government who try and teach us that we're special. No, we're not. Well, and when you see, I also think that's it's I think it's dangerous rhetoric when you start to tell one group that they're better than another group or they're more special than another group. I think because then it's like then you you can easily start to believe that. And then also it gives you the impression that other groups are less than than you. Right. This is something when I was growing up, uh, we went to church when I was when I was growing up. So I grew up in the church. One of the things that I, I disagreed with was I did feel like one of the churches I went to, our pastor used to he do this thing where he would just basically criticize other denominations and not even necessarily other religions, but other Christian denominations. So he would say, so for those of you who don't know, I actually went to a Pentecostal church and I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but they are very strict. So at one point I went to a Pentecostal church that did not last long, let me make that clear. Um, but they were very strict, a lot of rules. Uh, women couldn't wear pants, couldn't wear makeup, couldn't wear jewelry, like all that kind of stuff. Most of the rules applied to the women, go figure, right? But they would actually like he would basically demonize other denominations the methodists are bad you know the baptists are bad they're not they're not right because they're not us we're the special people we're the ones that are on the right path so i i saw some of that too within like you know within christianity and 
I, I never really understood the reason for having all these different denominations. If we're all reading from the same Bible or like the King James version or whatever, I never really understood that. But I think it is a dangerous thing when you start to tell one group of people that they are the ones that are, you know, better or supreme or, you know, special. Because then what comes along with that? The other groups are not there. The uh, U.S. officials, they make very clear what is going on. I mean, you had Biden basically just saying, we, 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 in reference to Israel. Our operation is going well. We are, you know, we're attempting to do this. It's like, okay, you're not even hiding the fact that Israel is this colonial outpost with, uh, you know, utility for the U.S. empire. I just saw RFK Jr., admitting as such. It, it was pretty fascinating. I don't know if you saw this clip, Roger. It was incredible to see a member of the ruling class just explicitly laying out the utility of Israel, saying it's our beachhead, it's our eyes and ears in the Middle East. If we let go of Israel's control and but the authority over Israel, China and Russia will get all the oil. And it was just like, wow, finally, someone just saying it for what it is. Let's not tiptoe around this notion that Oh, it's we're protecting it because it's a democracy. Oh, it's this and that. I mean, it, it 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 is very important for the U.S. to maintain Israel as its partner. Well, let us not mm -hmm. forget that the ADL and Smoly Butic told RFK that they were going to take any possible sniff of the presidency away from him if he didn't toe the line and say i cannot believe he believes all that bullshit about israel that he spouts because most of it is historically incorrect all that i don't think he believes it either i'm so glad that roger waters said this i don't think the rfk really believes all that stuff either i think that rfk he's a, a very intelligent man i mean he's he's a lawyer he's had a lot of education in this country that most of us uh would never have the opportunity to have the type of education that rfk jr had i mean he went to elite schools he's a kennedy for god's sake uh i i highly doubt that RFK Jr. is not educated enough to look up this information in reference to this conflict with Israel and Gaza. I highly doubt that. So I don't really think he believes all this stuff either. And I think what Roger Waters said there is spot on. I think that is exactly what is happening. It's horrible. About 1967 and how Israel was attacked by its Arab neighbors and in heroic way fought back and, <laughs> and got the Golan Heights and this. And they, they weren't attacked. They attacked Egypt and Syria. The whole Israeli project is based on or Orwell. I mean, it's all projection of what they do to other people and cry victim. And, and it's the same with everything. I mean, you mentioned just being there and the atmosphere. I mean, you know how it is to go into the West Bank, the giant red sign saying you could be killed, enter at your own risk. It's like, yeah, by you, yeah. by your soldiers. Right. Like, I mean, Palestine is the most gorgeous place on earth. The people are the most hospitable people in the world. Um, they welcome you with open arms. It's the soldiers, it's the settlers. Those are the people that are fanatical. And, and Roger, it kills me to see Israeli officials, as you mentioned, explicit about their genocidal intent. Very yep. clearly. I have never seen so many Israeli media officials and politicians just laying out their genocidal aspirations as I have in the last month juxtaposing that with Biden and all of these so-called liberals that are tiptoeing around the reality. They keep saying, oh, we need it. We need a humanitarian pause, Roger. Oh, well, we can't we can't trust the Hamas run health ministry. Well, look at Israeli media. They're saying every single death is correct. They're using Hamas death tolls and they're saying this is how many terrorists we've killed on a tracker live. If you're watching Israeli media and, and you have Democrats running cover for this genocide. It's sick and it's crazy. And why are we tiptoeing around what's actually happening here? And they know, and that, and that's the thing. They know you guys like these, these politicians, they know what's going on over there. They know what's happening. They're controlled. They're bought and, and paid for. And, you know, I think we need to start asking the question, who is running this country? Who?
please check out this full interview. It's really good. Uh, it is Roger Waters and Abby Martin on Gaza genocide. That is on Empire Files. Please go check out the rest of that. Uh, great interview there. But it's it's so much craziness happening. When you see this this debate between we're going to get into Piers Morgan and Rabbi Shmuley uh, with Jink Uger, it's just it's just wild and crazy. I seriously do not believe a lot of our politicians were lawyers before they were senators, before they were congressmen and women. These people are highly educated. They know exactly what's going on over there. These people have been bought off. They've been told to keep quiet about it or else. That's what's happening. And I believe the same thing with RFK Jr. too. I do not buy that RFK Jr. is stupid. Let's go to some of these com comments here. Violin says Netanyahu went to MIT. Israel surveillance technology is part of why your comments are being censored. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Interesting, Violin. JB says what's going on in the Congo is linked to Israel. That's right. JB did a, a stream about that earlier. You guys should check that out. Ravina said only 2 million of us left. I think uh, Ravina's talking about indigenous people. Gamer says Roger Waters and some other celebrities are standing up for Palestinians. Yeah, uh, Susan Sarandon, um, me and JP did a stream about it on RBN where we talked about where, where people were on either side of the issue. Um, a kid says, Savvy, the movies condition the world to be an American uh, centric and Eurocentric. The human condition is thought by movies more so than anything else. The age of the internet has eroded that narrative. Interesting. Interesting. 